fellow lexophiles, it's Elizabeth at the Ashland Branch, here with another poetry break. This month, I have poems themed around the topic of travel. So let's get started. Our first poem today is Alias City by Carol Frost. They were travelers, plotting river courses, writing the genesis of unknown peoples, fugitives with a revolver in one hand, reins in another, merchants among the olive trees, euphorbias, mimosas, emissaries, deserters. Some knew the native tongues. They called themselves by new names in the eastern twilight, different parts of their soul never having learned to live together. Skies burned. Dust covered the palms and minarets as they arrived by the incandescent shore of our city, each with his own little dreams and disasters. Some remained, never to be heard of again. Some left with caravans wearing native dress, ephemerids. Where are they? What are they used to? The only preserved interview concerning an artist and explorer. Did he ever speak of his friends in X? Never. The only thing he liked in X was his sister. But did you know that he painted? Oh yes, some fine things. Stemware, a series of watercolors of shoebills, and Abdim's stork. Our next poem is Carolina Journal by Nicole Pekarski. Smoke trees line the roadside, still bare beach and poplar bouquet with red bud and something rusty I can't name. Marches odd autumnals. One church towns I'm glad not to be from, split log strip malls with a porch where Claire's beauty shop shares a sign with antiques where you study grace in magazines, and when dad dies, you rename the family diner, New York, New York. Love is a means of travel, so you dye the linens pink and swan fold napkins, the word, holding the word peony in your mouth. Sundays drive out to watch the ferry drag its lace. Coastward, Easter colored clapboard the last generation shanties hovering on narrow stilts above the velour drift of tide plain, mink from a distance, muskrat up close. A drowsy instrumental music flooded at dusk. Beside the bridge, smooth brow of pewter, island of saplings blackened like a, fl like a framed up house. Our next poem is For a Traveler by Jessica Greenbaum. I only have a moment, so let me tell you the shortest story about arriving to a long-loved place, the house of friends in Maine, their lawn of wildflowers, their grandfather clock and candid portraits, their gabled attic rooms and wood stove in the kitchen, all accessories of the genuine summer years before when I was their son's girlfriend and tied an apron behind my neck beneath my braids and took from their garden the harvest for a dinner that I would make alone and serve at their big table with the gladness of the found and loved. The eggplant shone like polished wood, the tomatoes smelled like their furred collars, the dozen zucchini lined up on the counter like placid troops with the onions, their minions. And I even remember the garlic, each clove from its airmail envelope brought to the cutting board, ready for my instruction. In this very slight story, a decade later, I came by myself, having been dropped by the airport cab and waiting for the family to arrive home from work. I walked into the lawn waist high into the swaying purple lupines, the subject of June's afternoon light, 
as I had never been addressed. A displaced young woman with cropped hair, no place to which I wished to return, and no one to gather me in his arms. That day the lupines received me, and I was in love with them because they were all I had left. And in that same matter, I have loved much of the world since then. And who is to say there is more of a reason or more to love? This next poem is I Have a Time Machine by Brenda Shaughnessy. I have a time machine but unfortunately it can only travel into the future at a rate of one second per second, which seems slow to the, phys to the physicists and to the grant committees and even to me. But I managed to get there time after time to the next moment and to the next. Thing is, I can't turn it off. I keep zipping ahead, well, not zipping, and if I try to get out of this time machine, open the latch, I fall into space unconscious, then desiccated. And I'm pretty sure I'm afraid of that, so I stay inside. There's a window though. It shows the past. It's like a television or a fish tank, but it's never live, it's always over. The fish swim in backward circles. Sometimes it's like a rearview mirror, another chance to see what I'm leaving behind. And sometimes, like blackout, all that time wasted sleeping. Myself, age eight, whole head burnt with embarrassment at having lost a library book. Myself lurking in a candled corner, expecting to be found charming. Me holding a rose, though I want to put it down so I can smoke. Me exploding at my mother, who explodes at me, because the explosion of some dark star all the way back struck hard at mother's mother's mother. I turn away from the window, anticipating a blow. I thought I'd find myself an old woman by now, traveling so light in time, but I haven't gotten far at all. Strange not to be able to pick the pace as I'd like. The past is so horribly fast. Our next poem is The Traveler Heart by Vachelle Lindsay. I would be one with the dark, dark earth, follow the plow with a yokel tread. I would be part of the Indian corn walking the rose with the plumes overhead. I would be one with the lavish earth, eating the bee-stung apples red, walking where lambs walk on the hills, by oak grove paths to the pools be led. I would be one with the dark bright night, when sparkling skies and lightning wed, walking on with the vicious wind by roads whence even the dogs have fled. I would be one with the sacred earth, on to the end till I sleep with the dead. Terror shall put no spears through me. Peace shall jewel my shroud instead. I shall be one with all pit black things, finding their lowering threat unsaid. Stars for my pillow there in the gloom oak roots arching above my head. Stars like daisies shall rise through the earth, acorns fall round my breast that bled. Children shall weave there a flowery chain, squirrels on acorn hearts be fed. Fruit of the traveler heart of me, fruit of my harvest songs long sped, sweet with the life of my sunburned days when the sheaves were ripe and the apples red. And our final poem today is What You Have to Get Over by Dick Allen. Stumps, railroad tracks, 
early sicknesses, the blue one specifically, your first love rounding a corner, that snowy minefield. Whether you step lightly or heavily, you have to get over to that tree, that tree line a hundred yards in the distance before evening falls, letting no one see you wend your way. That wonderful old fashioned word, wend, meaning to proceed, to journey, to travel from one place to another, as from bed to breakfast, breakfast to imbecile work. You have to get over your resentments, the sun in the morning and the moon at night, all those shadows of yourself you left behind on odd little tables. Tote that barge, lift that bale. You have to cross that river, jump that hedge, surmount that slogan, crawl over this ego or that eros, then hoist yourself up onto that yonder mountain. Another old fashioned word yonder meaning that indicated place, somewhere generally seen or just beyond sight. If you would recover, you have to get over the shadowed, the shattered autos in the backwoods lot, to that bridge in the darkness where the sentinels stand, guarding the border with their half-slung rifles, warned of the likes of you. Thank you so much for joining me this month. I hope you enjoyed these poems and I will see you another time.